It all kind of started one Sunday in Ward Council. Um, I was sitting down and this tall, handsome, red-headed kid came and sat next to me. And I just kind of thought to myself like, oh, he's kind of cool. Looks like a nice guy, but I was kind of dating someone else at the time, so I didn't really think too much into it. She was there early and I showed up late. I came in and sat down next to her, said hello, and it kind of stopped right there. A few months went by, we were both at the donating uh, center for plasma. She came down, sat next, sat in front of me, and we started talking. And I was like, hey, you're in my ward. And I just remember thinking like how handsome he looked. And I was like, Oof, we got kind of like the jitters and chills about it. And so we started having a conversation and it was just so easy to talk to him. And then we both got called back. And so that kind of like ended the conversation. And I actually got super sick at plasma donation. Like I almost threw up. And so there was a ton of people around me like trying to make sure that I wasn't as sick um, and that I didn't like hurt myself. She ended up getting sick. And so I messaged her after the donation to see if she was okay. And we started talking a little bit after that. We had talked for like maybe a couple of weeks and he still hadn't asked me on a date yet. <laughs> and I was like, man, we're gonna go into this next semester. We're gonna have like our spring break and I don't really like know what's gonna happen after that, like if we're both gonna be here or whatever. So um, it was like week of finals and I just messaged him and I was like, hey, I have to eat and you have to eat. So I'm making dinner, you should just come eat with me. <laughs> He's like, I have a basketball game, but I'll be done around six. And I was like, okay, so how about you come over at seven and eat? And he's like, yeah, that sounds good. Seven o'clock comes around that day and like I still haven't heard from him. And then he texts me and he's like, hey, I'm gonna be a little bit late. So I was late because I was playing basketball. The games were going good, we kept, kept winning. I totally lost track of time. I finally realized that I was like two hours late and I left and finally met up with her. And and I was a little bit annoyed because I was like, okay, I seriously put myself so out here for you and <laughs> then you don't show up till eight, like till two hours after. So I was like, well, I'm not even going to warm up your food. So it was warm two hours ago. <laughs> so we got the first little taste of my sassiness then. Looking back at it, I was a little intimidated, but it was still attractive. Um, the way she responded to me being so late. After that, uh, we came back from the spring break and we just had kept talking all the, throughout the break. And that's how everything started with us. We had talked about getting married. We had um, an idea of when we wanted to get married at the end of the semester. She told me what she wanted as far as a ring. She wanted the marquee diamond on an east-west setting, but it had to be handmade. So it took like six weeks for it to, to be made for whatever reason. So I knew it was coming but he kept just like making excuses like that, oh, like the ring hasn't come yet. She kept throwing in little comments here and there saying that it's never gonna happen. We're not gonna get engaged anytime soon before the end of the semester. I finally get the ring. I tell one of her roommates, I was like, hey, I got the ring, it's here, it's perfect. Um, this is what I wanna do. I wanna do a scavenger hunt with all of our firsts. One day I got home from the gym and I wasn't supposed to be home, but my class had been canceled. And I got home and he was there talking to one of my roommates and they were acting all kind of shady a little bit. <laughs> so I was like, oh, hey, like, what are you doing here? It's so good to see you. And he's like, yeah, I have to go. I'll see you later. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Her roommate comes in with the bouquet and the first clue. I think she said that she knew that something was going on because I was at her house when she wasn't there. I looked at my roommate and I was like, so am I gonna have to take a lot of pictures? Like, are we getting engaged? And she just like smiled so big at me. So I was like, I knew that it was happening then. He just sent me around to a bunch of different places that kind of brought up old memories between us. So the first place that I sent her was the first place where we met at Ward Council. Um, I sent her to the building. And then had another note that sent me to the Plasma Center which was where we kind of like first hit it off. And then I sent her to where we had our first date, the date where I was a couple hours late, that first dinner. And then he sent me to the place where we had our first kiss. And then I sent her to the place where we said, I love you on the balcony of my apartment. And then after that, it said like, now you're going to the place where you'll first say that I do, that you want to marry me or something like that. Then I sent her to this place called Beaver Dick. It's a little park. 
I just remember like looking at him, I started walking towards him and I just was like so excited that I couldn't just walk. So I started running towards him. And when she finally got to me, I was nervous. I kind of hesitated when she first got to me and my words were stuttering and mumbling. And, and I was like, Kate, what are, are you gonna ask me to marry you or not? <laughs> <laughs> and so then he got down on one knee and, um, and he asked me if I would marry him. And I just remember just feeling so excited and so happy because I knew that that was what I wanted without a doubt and something that I had waited for a long time. Some of the reasons that I love Devin, first of all, a lot of people say like opposites attract and I think that we are very different in a lot of ways but to us all of those things that we're so different on it feels like we more complement each other than we're opposite of each other. He is always so patient with me and with everyone else. So Michaela Pack, she's a special person. I love her because she's a very determined person. She has goals in her mind that she wants to achieve. It's very admirable. He is such a good priesthood holder that he always wants to do what the Lord wants him to do. And he's so concerned with being able to raise a righteous family and to be able to be a good example as a father and as a husband. I love that she has an attitude to her. She's very sassy. It makes bantering very, very easy um, between the, each other. Every time that we spend together, we have so much fun. We're always joking with each other, laughing with each other, and teasing each other. Um, and I just love the way that we interact and how much fun we have with each other. I love the fact that she always has a comment in class or she'll get up and bear a testimony. She's always willing to bear her testimony and share the gospel with anybody that is willing to listen. He's one of the most loving people that I've ever met and I love that I know that he would do anything for me. I'm very excited to see where our future holds and what our family is going to be like. I love you so much, Michaela. I feel like I have waited a long time to find someone that I feel so compatible with and so excited to start an adventure and a life with. And I can't wait to start that life with you, Devin.